So today my beautiful people I am back with another Dying Light 2 video and today guys I bring you 10 of the best secret rewards you can get in the game. How's it going guys my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Okay so Dying Light 2 is full of secrets and today I bring you 10 of the best things you can earn that we know of so far. And before we go any further guys if you ain't a part of my discord you should definitely join it's full of amazing dying light two players happy to help you out so if you need somebody to dupe with play the game with if you want someone to talk about the game with secrets easter eggs you'll find it all on my discord link below okay so this game has quite a few amazing secrets and today we check out 10. okay so first up guys we have the space chicken pan of destiny blueprint which is absolutely hilarious this is basically a frying pan boomerang you throw this and it comes back to you okay so this is gotten from you doing a side quest that is found within a newfound lost lands as you can see on screen now if you come the direction i go on screen now and come up to this uh, talking chicken and complete a quest for him in you going out and finding a ship part so we can go home basically the quest reward is his pan of destiny blueprint and you get it by sitting on the mattress next to his cage and you'll notice it will spawn after a small amount of time pretty cool guys Next up people we have the United in Fun Soccer Ball Blueprint. This is basically a ball you can craft, bind it to your left trigger, drop it on the floor and kick it about meaning you can play football absolutely anywhere. Why this is in the game I have no idea. I stopped questioning Techland from the Dying Light 1 days. Now the way you get this blueprint is well it was at one time a mystery. You get it via triggering the dancing zombie easter egg which for a long long while didn't work for many many people and I still think it don't work for others but this is how you do it you need to come to this point on a map within Trinity within Old Villador as you can see on screen now here you will find a little small football field or soccer field depending where you're from in the world within here guys there is a ball which you need to kick into the goal and how this actual easter egg works is you need to score 9 goals but in between every single individual goal you score you need to fast travel out of the trinity area completely what i was doing was guys i was fast traveling down to the main terminal station within the quarry end area once i fast traveled down i'd run all the way back up and back to this soccer field and you have to do this between every single individual goal you score so basically eight or nine times it is quite tedious but it's worth it in the end now on the third goal you score you'll notice that the football goal actually sparks a little bit of electricity on the sixth goal you'll score the same thing will happen with the goal but you'll also spawn in a sword and on the ninth goal you score you spawn in a dancing zombie who will then try to attack you you take him out and then you'll get the blueprint spawn in a small box in between those goal posts now keep in mind when I actually clocked this was working was after I scored my first goal and fast traveled out of the Trinity area when I got back there I noticed that the ball had changed position. The ball needs to change position in between every goal you score. If it isn't then I'm afraid I don't think this is working for you so keep that in mind. Okay so next up guys we have the Mantis Blades Cyberpunk or shall we call them the cyber hands 2177 blueprints which are amazing now these are obtained via you firstly getting to the top of the vnc tower the broadcast tower now the easy way is to play the story up until you do the broadcast mission this means then you can get a lift from the bottom to the top if you haven't done this guys you have to climb all the way around and it can be an absolute nightmare if you haven't got a grabber hook good luck to you because i'm not sure you can even get to the top now once you're at the top guys you need to make your way down to this far building here 
but it's probably safe to go to this closer building first, then make your way from this building down to the next And once you are down here guys, and keep in mind, I believe this only works at night, you'll notice a fire in the far corner. If you go and speak to this dude, he actually mentions and talks about Kyle Crane from Dying Light 1. Once all of that is over though guys, he will spawn a box next to him just before he vanishes and inside of this box will be these Mantis Blades blueprint. So enjoy these. Next up guys, you have two blueprints found in the same room the secret developer room and this guy's a game requires you to go to the top of the VNC tower and then guys you have to make your way back down to that first building we jumped onto before we went to go and speak to that other guy that gave us the Cyberhands 2177 blueprint so the first tower is where you need to get to now upon you landing on this tower you then have to connect these electrical wires and it can be a little bit difficult so you first want to grab this one and jump down to the building or room just below you. What I do here guys is step off backwards and then just pop out your power glider. Press that power glider button though, do not hold it. If you hold it, you'll release the wire and you'll have to start this again. And from here guys, just do as I do. It's basically the same thing all the way to the bottom. Now once you get to the bottom guys, you'll see there's a room here. Simply go and open it. Be careful though because if you haven't been here already, there will be a zombie who's going to try and blow you up. So just take him out or hit him and then run away. So within this developer room there are quite a few decent sightings, so easter eggs, this that and the other. But the main two are the left finger Glover and a Korek Infinite Durability Charm. So let's first start with the charm. So within the initial room guys, you'll see a little seating area where you can sit down in four different positions. It's four or five anyway. What you need to do is sit down in each one of these positions for a couple of seconds. Within the last seating position, just sit here and you'll notice this blueprint will spawn on the table right in front of you. And there you have it guys, you have the infinite durability charm. You can put this on any weapon and give it plus 500 durability, but the best thing is you can keep re-equipping it to the same weapon, so the durability never runs out. Okay guys, so on to the left finger Glover. So this one is pretty simple, just go into the bedroom and sit on that bed and just wait. Eventually, after all the teddy bears have spawned in, this will spawn up on the board right in front of you. And there you have it guys. A left finger Glover, which is a gun, which you basically shoot out of your hand. It is pretty cool. Next up people, we have the Mario Triple Jump Boots. It's a me, Marion. Now these are probably the easiest to get on this list and what they require you to do is come to this position on the map right here and just scale up into this mini hideout. Once you lock pick the door and get in here guys, put on the radio and sit on the bed. Upon you sitting on the bed for a decent amount of time, you'll notice that they spawn right in front of you within a box. These you can equip and they give you an amazing triple jump and they are really that simple. So next up guys, you have the Cac Purse Flip Flops. Now these at first, if you've got these already, they won't seem like anything special. But when you equip them and actually start using them, you'll probably soon realize that these are actually amazing. What these do is they eliminate full damage for quite a certain height and it's pretty high. And these guys are actually very simple to get. Now in central loop area, you'll see that there is this stash house right here. Within the stash house guys, this should be waiting for you 
on this chair. Now the first time I come here they wasn't here. So what I did was I cleared out a few side quests in this area. I opened up the metro. I collected the military airdrop. And eventually after a few days in game time. They were just there for me. So I don't know what triggers it. It could be just be another bug that this game has. I do not know. But if they're not here for you the first time. Clear out as much as you can in this small area. And then go back guys. Because you won't want to miss out on these. Next up guys we have two blueprints that come from the same easter egg these are the mistress sword as well as the dying force one reference to zelda i believe and the other reference to star wars now these are both found within the doom easter egg challenge and to initially start this challenge you need to collect five black ducks i have made a full guide on this video and i'll link that in the video description if you do want to check it out but once you have the five black ducks you need to make your way to the vnc tower the broadcast tower go down into the basement swim on the the water or go for the door on your right run to the elevator on the end go down to level zero place the black ducks on the tables connect the wires create an asymbolic star and the challenge will start up for you now once you are in this challenge guys you need to run to two certain points to grab these blueprints which i will show you on screen now from the start of this challenge room so once you grab one just die respawn at the start go into the challenge again and grab the other one and you are good to go guys Okay, so lastly guys, we have Kyle Crane's Dog Tags Weapon Charm. Now to get these, you need to come to the PK Floating Fortress upon Central Loop. Within here, you need to make your way into the Memorial Room. And you'll be met by a lady who offers you a mission, a side quest for you to retrieve Dog Tags. Now there's four stages to this actual quest. And upon you doing the fourth guys, you are rewarded these Dog Tags. Now each individual step... This requires you to go out to certain parts of the city, kill a few zombies, and then retrieve dog tags. It is as simple as that, guys. Step 4 requires you to, I believe, go back into the VNC tower and retrieve her friend's dog tags. Someone a little closer to her. Now, once you've done this, like I said, she will reward you Kyle Crane's dog tags, which you can use as a weapon charm. Pretty epic, guys. And there we have it, people. 10 amazing secrets you need to get your hands on. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like it really helps me out. If you're new around here and want to see more Dying Light, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. Guys, thanks as always for stopping by. And hopefully I will see you on that next one.